Area of interest number one is really handy for demonstrating an important thing about these five areas of interest, which is that you already use them. Your brain already understands them instinctively. It's how you talk already. It's how you sing already, whether you know about it or not. You use these five areas of interest in two kind of main ways, consciously and unconsciously. If you don't know about all five, then those ones are always going to be used unconsciously. The second you're paying attention to one of them, your brain is going and adjusting the other four. It's just the way it is. Sometimes it can be the opening of your mouth that's getting adjusted and you, you don't know anything about it. It's often much more likely that someone who's been singing for a while is adjusting internal parts that relate to these five areas of interest and they don't know that they're doing it. So if you want to get an idea of what it is you're actually doing, it helps to know this theory. And here's why. If you understand that these five areas of interest tune the same resonant frequencies, then it means if you somehow eliminate one of them from, from play, so if you, if you handicap, for instance, the end of your mouth and you don't allow it to move, but then you tell your brain, I want the same vowels. So now you're paying attention to one area of interest and what you're doing to it is you're ruining it. You're, you're preventing it from adjusting or you're adjusting it in a way that handicaps your whole vocal tract. But what your brain's going to go and do is compensate for that by moving the other areas of interest so that the resonant frequencies you needed still somehow come out. And it does this by using these five areas of interest. It probably uses more than these five, but it does use these five. Now that means, if I'm right, I should be able to force area of interest number one or number three to be much more active by limiting motion of area of interest number two.